Rana and welcome to FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Um, it's been again, like last time, a few days for me since I've played this. Um, been out in the sun, not enjoying the sun particularly, mainly just sort of baking slowly in the heat whilst I dig in the garden. But you know, got some sun. Summer's done for me now. Um, so yeah, because I was out in the real world, I've not played this as much as I wanted to. Also, work's been pretty horrible uh, but here we are we're back with Toten Gengi and I don't think we've actually played many games since the last video so I think we covered the Feral Cats and Takara Terrors where we got our wins we drew against Pepite in the development gold which leaves us in a pretty good position still so that's, we've played 4-1-3 draw and won got this from some 10 it's, it's going okay we've got Isla Magdalena uh, today who are all the way down here and our closest real world Say real world. Closest senior full team rivals of Anger Vines. Down here, a fellow Gambier side. And four points behind us. It's gonna be difficult to work out, you know, what the general quality of the league is, because it depends. It really kinda of comes down to what happens when we play each other. These under twenty threes really don't matter that much in comparison. So it'll take a little while until we've played the closer teams. Uh we will have a good idea of whether we're going to be going up or not, although I'm, you know, quietly, quietly confident. So we're away to the Isla Magdalena. Uh, Ariz is injured. Guess. Yeah. I'd actually forgotten just how depleted this squad was in the in the sort of week that I've not played it. Kind of, um, I've got another sort of save going on in the background that I play where I've been sort of bobbing around the UK, it's like a UK journeyman, or UK and Ireland journeyman, and actually I've, when I've had a chance to play, because I can stream to my laptop, not my laptop, to my wife's iPad that I've basically stolen, and it works perfectly. Um, obviously I can't record when I'm doing that, so I play this other other save, and I've got quite far into it, and I've got like a, a really good Strand Ra squad that I've got up to the championship in Scotland. It's got a big squad with every position with depth. And then Tertengegi wings here have got barely one person per position at times. Gubag doing his thing. Thomas doing all right there to actually cut that one out. Carnetti, Savage, Bon, long ball to Dean. Austral Islands player. Let's play for the humpbacks. And there it comes to nothing. I'm just hoping we can keep our general momentum up. Go on, Chabert. That's good. That's a nice finish. Chabert was a good buy, I think. I think he's matched the most goals he's ever scored in the season already. So that's sort of six or seven games in. But just one touch. Boom. It goes. I think from the kind of mutiny trophy matches we played, we've established there's not necessarily a huge gap between us and the teams above us. But I think where the real difference is, and if we get promoted to the championship, um, I think we'll feel this, depending on what the wage budget is. But what happened off the ball there to uh, Dean? He just fell over. Yeah, we've got no depth in our squad. Whereas most of the championship sides will actually have a, a side um, because they'll be able to afford it. So it, how well we do there over the course of the season is really going to depend on depth, which we will have to work on. Go on, Dean, racing away. Almost. So, got the championships to look forward to. Hopefully. Kind of putting the cart before the horse a little bit with that. But if we're beating Magdalena now, we've beaten some championship sides, we've beaten, I can't remember who it was we played. Beginning, it was a real side. It wasn't Tibai, was it? Was it Naruto? That's it. So we've beaten them. So long as we just keep beating these senior sides, we'll be alright. We don't need to be first, we just need to be the best of the rest in terms of the senior ones. Oh yeah, looks really injured down there. He's flopping around. Come on, Chabert. Picked up a knock. It looked like more than a knock. It's like he's dying. It 
So around about this time of year, so I'm recording on the 8th of July. Um, around this time of year is when you start seeing lots of people talk about what they want to do next for FM20. So you got lots of people doing their kind of save announces and things like that. Um, and I kind of know what I want to do. I'm not going to announce it yet or anything like that because it's a bit weird announcing it on Twitter when you've only got a handful of followers like that. I think the first thing to announce is I'll definitely be doing Tahiti again. Uh, but what I will be doing, sorry, not my microphone, what I will be doing is changing um, some of the elements. So I'm going to say to them now. Passionate, still improve. Go on. Yes, I'll be doing FM Tahiti again because I am FM Tahiti. Uh, so I have to. That's what I love doing every, every year. Um, and hopefully by the time when it comes around, is it in November time it officially comes out? But around that time it comes out and we could play with the database and do the editing, uh, we'll be in a position where we've had massive success in this save and it'll be, we'll come to a natural kind of end point. Um, if we've not come to a natural end point, I'll just carry on with this for a bit um, before starting the next one. Perfectly fine with me. If I'm enjoying it, I'll just carry on playing it. It doesn't have to be the most up-to-date version of Football Manager. And what I don't want to do is sort of go on to Football Manager 20 and then try and come back into FM19 because I don't know about any of you but I hate going back versions it's really difficult because there's such a huge difference um, I've got all the FMs on disc or on Steam all the way back to the first one, 2005 one um, and they are very different animals there's a lot of nostalgia but each version is usually progressively better I think for FM19 that's definitely true, for FM20 I've got my fingers crossed, it's going to be good. So we'll definitely be doing TTs, just we'll come do it when we come to a natural point. If that's after the new game's been released, then it's after. I have to take Dean off, he's snatching at his chances. Poor Matt. Let's bring a cross for... Oh yeah. Yes, I'll be doing the TT save. What I will be looking for, hopefully, is to make some changes. So I've got a list of things I want to do. One of, one of the big things I want to try and do is see if I can set things up so teams from Tahiti can qualify for, I think it's the FA, or the version of the FA Cup in France. Um, because in real life, teams from Tahiti do have the potential to be drawn into that um, depending on, I think, where they finish or qualifiers they go through. Um, so I'd really like to do that because that'd be another competition, another avenue for some money, some reputation, some success. So that's one of the things I want to set up. Um, another thing I'd quite like to set up is maybe add a few more teams based on a few more islands just to uh, sort of beef it up and maybe place them in a league below the development league so they have the potential to be kind of... Uh, promoted in. That genuinely is off. Winning. Got a lot of red cards and yellow cards in my games recently, not just on this one. Yeah. See, so yeah, I want to get us into the, the French Cup. I want to see if I can tweak some of the Siena Champions League stuff. Um, just in terms of when and how people qualify, I have to change some of the dates for some of the leagues for that. Um, I want to make 3D kits for the teams. So instead of using the kind of editor's preset stripes or whatever patterns that they've got, I want to see if I can make one of those wraparound 3D kits for each team. Um, but I have no idea where to start with that. I know it came off oh, bollocks. Tapa Scoobag. That is horrific sounding tapas. Oh, what's that? That was Cornetti, so yeah. It's poor. We are a player down, so a little bit under threat. Did he have to win it? But Dean could have scored a couple. So yeah, I want to put 3D kits in. Um, a couple of other smaller minor changes I want to put in. I want to put in the away kits, not the away 3D kits, but the away kits on the club screen. 
Oh, Hero. Made that mistake, and now he's he scored his first goal against his old team to try and make up for that missed header before with a header, just proving he can do it. Thomas to the back post. He shouldn't be able to get away with it there. But their defence is just as bad as ours. 90 minutes plus two. Palmer, go on. He's so slow. I didn't realise he was that slow. So yeah, a few tweaks to the TT database just to improve it a little bit for next time around. If there's anything you can think of that you'd like to see or changed or added, uh, let me know as well. I'll see if I could do that. The other kind of big thing I wanted to change as well is to make these different countries like Gambia, Austral Islands and so on, I've replaced teams that already exist in the OCL with them. Um, so things like... Um, Samoa, American New Samoa, Tonga, and teams like that. Um, like Solomon Islands, we might have replaced as well. New Caledonia. What I'd really like to do is keep the other Oceania nations intact and then add these extra ones. The problem with that is, if you've ever used the um, Football Manager editor, is that actually international editing is really difficult. You have to use the resource archive tool thing to unpack some of the rules so you can make some of the changes you might want to to certain teams. And as far as I'm aware, you can't com add a completely new country. All you can do is edit an old country. And there are some extinct countries on there, the countries that don't uh, exist anymore. So there's like a United Ireland one, there's um, a Soviet Union one, things like that. So you can use these older ones, but you have to change the continent and you still have to use this very advanced way of doing it. Um, so I could do that, but when, I would, if, when you do that, they don't automatically enter into that continent's qualifications for the World Cup or things like that. So I might have to play around with a lot of the international rules. Um, so I'm going to try and do that because I want to include as many of these Oceania teams as uh, nations as possible. I want to add rather than replace and taking away. But we'll see. So I'll come back to that. That's, so that's one of the things I'm going to be doing for FM20 is an improved version of this. Right, so I'll come back in a few minutes for the next match, which will be against... Let's come back for Puka Puka. Let's do the Mutiny Trophy. Um, and then the next episode will be Shellfish and Noruto. I'm not going to show any of these in the 23s, really. Right, back in just a second or two. And we're back for the match against Puka Puka, um, and they are bottom of the Mutineer Pride Trophy, so hopefully this will be an alright match. They're in the Championship, I think. Yeah, they're in the Championship. Doing alright in the Championship there. I'm not quite sure how this match is going to go, so although we beat the Feral Cats and the Terrors, and doing well in the group, I had two matches to play in between the last one we just saw against Magdalena, against Tetero under 23s and Moti 1 under 23s, and we lost both of them. Did have a little bit of mis so, kind of had to go on goal. It's a bit of a liability currently. And we had a player sent off um, against Moti 1, but actually they were better than us in both cases. It looks closer than it actually was. So we've dropped to sixth in the development gold, but we are still the top by goal difference uh, team, so a bit of a poor run. The under the kind of good premiership under twenty whoops, what there? The um good under twenty three teams from like the good premiership teams are starting to get going and start to cause us some trouble. Right, we've got everyone back apart from Lambert who is now suspended. And again, this is one of those matches where if we do lose, it's no big deal. Because the Mutiny of Trophy is not really on our radar, considering kind of how thin the squad is. Back onto our sand pitch. So I mentioned um, during the other match that one of my plans is to obviously carry on with FMTT for FM20. One of the ones that I've mentioned is... Um, creating a kind of UK regional database. So if you're not from the UK, or if you are from the UK but you're not very good at geography, uh, you can split um, England um, 
into regions. So there are counties like Yorkshire, Lancashire, Warwickshire, and so on like that. Um, but there are also slightly bigger groupings that are just regions. They're kind of like UK government um, regions. So for example, Yorkshire and the Humber are one region. Um, Lancashire, uh, I think Lancashire, Manchester, around sort of Greater Manchester and um, sort of around Liverpool are Northwest region. Northeast region covers sort of Newcastle and Tyneside uh, and generally sort of Northumbria up there. And then you've got East Midlands, West Midlands and so on. You've got these kind of slightly bigger combinations um, rather than just counties. And what I want to do, what I'm going to do, um, oh, I thought that was going the wrong way then. Go on. There we go, Jean-Marc Chabert. Not a bad shot. Um, yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do is create a national team for each of those regions and insert that national team into the kind of Euro and World Qualifiers. Um, but I'm going to keep the UK league system the same and just make sure all the towns are assigned to the country of their region. So all the, t all the towns from Yorkshire, so Leeds, Sheffield, Huddersfield, Bradford, places like that, um, will all be part of the Yorkshire nation. And that should mean that regens will be produced um, eventually with Yorkshire nationality, maybe English their second nationality, and the England team will remain. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over a team from one of the regions, almost certainly a team from Yorkshire, towards the bottom of the league system, and I'm going to do it as a kind of club and country sort of save, where I just use players from that region for that team, and I get that team as high as possible and try and improve the national side as much as possible. And it will also be a sort of insight into how strong are these kind of different regions, because, for example, Yorkshire will have teams like Leeds, um, Bradford, the two teams from Sheffield, uh, Huddersfield, um, as well, as, and Hull as the kind of like, bigger um, Yorkshire teams, but then you'll have a region like the London region, which will have Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham, Tottenham, and so on. Or you'll have the Northwest region, which will have both Manchester's, Everton, Liverpool as well, uh, will be in there. So some regions might have plenty of towns, but they might not as much in the way of kind of good youth, or it's a good daisy cutter of a shot, it's a big sub. So yes, yeah, some will have just better facilities for producing good youth. So I'd expect them to gradually outperform certain other regions. But I'll be there getting into the mix for that. And I was kind of inspired to do that by was it Conifer or Conifer, who are the kind of um the international organization for national football teams from nations that aren't recognized as nations or as their non-FIFA nations essentially. So Places like the uh, Chagos Islands, um, Tabulands, Ossetia, uh, Yorkshire, We've got a team in there, Kurnow, uh, Parishes of Jersey, have got a team as well. So they, they play international football, they arrange their friendlies and things like that. They've got their own kind of European and world uh, competitions, but they've got their own kind of issues with the kind of, they're not particularly well funded, so they can't always afford to do these international competitions. But I thought I'd want to see what would happen if I sort of regionalize this and use that as my sort of starting point. And I think it'll be interesting. I think I'll enjoy that. So that's another one I'll do and I'll put that on the, the channel. And the only other thing I might consider doing, but this is obviously time permitting, I don't have time to play that many saves, is I might consider doing a Vatican save. So I went to the Vatican recently. Uh, it was part of a holiday to Rome. And the Vatican do have football teams, but I'll put them in as a nation and do club and country, but put them in the sort of lower leagues uh, in Italy and see how they compete. A bit kind of San Marino-esque. In fact, I might actually re no, I won't replace San Marino, but I'll replace a small team with, with the Vatican for that. So those are my kind of plans for FM20, alongside any kind of offline save that I do. But if there's anything about that you, you'd like to know more about, just let me know. Or if there's any suggestions you've got, let me know now, because I've got plenty of time to plan things. So there we go. I really didn't pay much attention to that match. So I was too busy talking to you about everything else, but we won 3-0.
and it was comfortable. And it puts us in a really good position. Have we qualified? We've not definitely qualified yet. So we still have nine points. We still have two more games to play, Noruta and the Jupiters there. So yeah, we could well just not qualify. Um, so next episode we come back for, we'll play the Shellfish and probably Noruta. See how we do against these other under-23s now, because we've, we've had a bit of a blip there. But thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>